is going to sound kind of ranty, but uh, I'm driving to a private lesson right now. I have some free time and I just keep thinking about stuff in my head, so I figure why not just record it and uh, post it online. So one thing, especially nowadays, this year, I know it's been terrible for a lot of people, but in terms of karate, because this is a karate channel, you guys are on your own journey. What that means is you should be on a journey of self-discovery, not listening to people that are ranked above you just because they are above you, right? Explore. The biggest thing is be curious. Try things out. And uh, I got a request on the Patreon about um, how to begin a karate journey, and I'll, I'll make a video about that, but I think the biggest thing is the more you have control over your own body, um, mentally but but foremost physically, in a sense that you are coordinated to the point where you can feel what is right and what is wrong um, structurally and uh, and uh, dynamically, and you can move without injuring yourself. Right. And so. Whatever that takes, either that's uh, joining a yoga class, uh, learning how to lift weights, Olympic lifts, um, getting stronger, body weight movements, ground movements, doing animal movements, right? Whatever that takes to get you to have full control over your body, that's going to help you in everything in life and, and foremost it's going to help you in, in your karate development. Because then you don't have to trust somebody um, blindly that you're doing something right. You can feel that it's right or wrong. And that's why a lot of my drills, the drills we do on the channel, are solo drills. And then if you have a partner, they're kind of partner compliance drills to help reinforce some stuff, right? To help reinforce your structure. You're not trying to blast your partner with 100% aggression trying to get a technique to work. It's more about playing. We always talk about being playful. It's more about playing in that 30 to 60% range and increasing the resistance level over time, not right off the bat. But that methodology, the whole rationale behind it is you need to become coordinated before you start applying force to things force applied correctly is going to help you in the fight. Just pure violence uh, without any correct technique. Yes, it can overcome an opponent, but you gotta think about the what ifs, and I say this all the time. What if he's stronger? What if he's bigger? What if he's faster? What if he's more skilled than you? In that case, uh, cardio, um, everything like that, more violence will defeat violence with when everything is set to equal, right? So that means your mentality has to be better. Your mentality to survive, the keyword survive, not win. Your mentality to survive uh, needs to trump the opponent's, the attacker's mentality to take over to win. Right? That leads me to another thing. Stop thinking about your body as individual parts. You're not just punching with your fist. You're not just kicking with your feet. And I was thinking about how to work this. In a fight, using kata, in karate, you are a vehicle. I say vehicle because I'm driving. You are a vehicle of destruction. And what I mean by that is if there's an obstruction in your way, you either go around it, you either go through it, or you either break it, right? Or you destroy it. Most of the time, if the person's stronger than you, you're not going to be able to destroy it or go through it, right? So either you gotta go around or you gotta destroy it. Another thing too, if you think about your body as an entity, as a whole unit of destruction, if something's obstructed, if you hit a wall in your path, right? Let's say you want to throw a punch and the guy checks
checks your shoulder. What I mean is they they uh, either grab onto your arm or they push your shoulder back and you can't reach them anymore. Well, this part of your body is now stuck in place, but the rest of your body can still move. I need to use my right hand now to pull that off. They are a, a vehicle. They are a vessel that's just running from point A to point B. And whatever obstruction is in the way, they are just clearing that with whatever is available, right? And that's the key thing. It's whatever is available. And that's why I really gravitated towards headbutts in a, in a, in a real fight we fight with kata in a self-defense confrontation because most of the times they're gonna wrap up your arms the fight can't start from a distance but you watch every single video someone gets tagged and they're gonna close the distance automatically it's it's in our nature right they call it the panicked wrestler in, in uh, MMA you get rocked a little bit you're gonna go in for the dive sometimes they dive technically sometimes they just dive and grab onto whatever they want but if you're on the receiving end of the grab, and let's say both of your arms are locked up, well, what's available? Your knees, of course. But if they have forward momentum pushing you back, it might not be the best idea to throw a knee because you're gonna get taken to the ground. Your base is gone. So for me, in my opinion, in my experience, arms wrapped up, immediately headbutt, right? Or arms wrapped up, sprawl your hips back, make sure you can't get taken back, throw the knee. And that's that's automatic, but it's not automatic in the sense that I drilled that combination. It's automatic in the sense that I did a mental switch in my mind that I'm a vessel, he's a vessel, I'm destroying his vessel, I'm going through him, I'm going from point A to point B. The vines are capturing my arm, and whatever I'm gonna use, whatever is available, I'm going to use that as the as a method of attack. And then that goes again, this is if you guys watch this channel, that kind of goes. I'm I'm repeating myself over and over again because combat is very simple. It's it's violence with technique, right? And you can reinforce violence with uh, strength training, with coordination training, um, uh, mental training, meditation all these things you can run sprints to build build up your mental endurance you could do ice baths to build up your mental endurance um, you can do feats of strength right and it's all to build up your mental endurance because you never want to be in a confrontation where your mind breaks that's the worst thing your your will to survive ends because that's the end of you if i can last in a 10 minute ice bath I know the guy who's going to attack me, or the guy I'm sparring against, I know he cannot last in a 10 minute ice bath, and that gives me that 0.001% edge over him mentally in our in our uh, sparring situation. And in that case, 
I know I have the edge over most people who don't even train. And that's that's the confidence you carry with you in everyday life, right? Uh, that's a whole nother discussion. But, um, but yeah, I was just scrolling YouTube as, as I do, watching martial arts videos, and there's a trend with karate guys. I don't know if it's just a uh, lack of lack of knowledge combatively. It might be a lack of, lack of um, experience in, in uh, I mean, you don't even have to have experience in real world, world situation in the sense like you, you shouldn't be trying to pick fights, but the way you train is the, is the way you're gonna defend yourself, right? And this goes to the people who are trying to push the idea that karate is a method for self-defense, which karate culture pushes that idea, which all martial arts, uh, civilian protection arts, which, which karate was, is a method for self-defense. That doesn't mean the sports stuff isn't cool and stuff, but um, you gotta understand that karate is, there's, there's so many, there's so many gems in karate for self-defense, but it's, it feels like most channels, most people are pushing kind of like the spectacle of karate just, just to get more exposure, maybe to build their own brand. But you guys have all, all of the control. You are on your own journey, right? And this circles back to what I was saying in the beginning, but you guys are on your own journey. You're on your own path. Don't be, yes, respect your, your upper belts, but don't be beholden to them, right? Because their journey is different than yours. Their experience are different than yours. They might have some knowledge that you don't, but there are also other instructors and other styles that have knowledge that they don't, right? Um, that's why a lot of the people that gravitate towards us, they cross train. There's a reason for that. Um, it's also very humbling because I myself have seen and interacted with high level black belts, whatever that means, high ranking black belts that that they might, they might do it for uh, historical reasons. They might like the meditative, the, the stress relieving aspect of it. Um, but in my opinion, those are a byproduct of uh, the self-defense aspect, right? It's the whole jitsu versus do uh, argument. And that's a, that's a whole nother vlog to talk about, but anyways, Guys, be curious, go train, push yourself, keep researching, and and also put out content. And don't be afraid to put out content. I would rather have thousands of karate culture-like channels that are putting out real-world real, real world applications that they have discovered uh, than trying to wait around, sit around for the next for the next video to upload from, from your favorite YouTuber. What are you waiting for? And I know it's if it's tough to uh, find a partner to train with right now, but there are thousands of solo drills you guys can do. You can makeshift uh, a band, like an arm with a band, right? You can build stuff. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, go train.